Welcome to Category 5 Technology TV. What you're about to experience is a free, worldwide, interactive broadcast from Ontario, Canada. We broadcast live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Get your questions in. Join the community chat room at www.category5.tv or email us at live at category5.tv. And now, let's begin. Here's your host, Robbie Ferguson. Yeah, that's why we come on the show. I know. Because Robbie has AC. <laughs> I, I gotta keep them. I gotta keep them around so they, they just they show up and they're just a sweaty mess and it's like here we are, cool off. Yeah. <laughs> no offense about. It's a truth fact. It's, it's all good. Uh, tonight we have lots of exciting stuff going on. We're going to be talking about uh, video editing on Ubuntu Linux or any Linux, of course, for that matter. We're going to be looking at the free OpenShot video editor. Almost a tongue twister to say. It's going to be fantastic. You want to stick around for that. I also, sorry, I think you should check your mic. What are they saying? Just saying. Hey. You got to be kidding me. Sorry, guys. Are we good? Thanks, good. buddy. Yeah. Did you hear everything that I said? <laughs> Fade to black. Welcome to episode number 194. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, OpenShot is a video editor. It's freely available for Linux. We're going to be talking about that in just a little bit. Uh, Robbie is uh, learning that uh, now that we have a phantom-powered microphone, he needs to turn mm -hmm. on the phantom power unit. Always good. Good point. We've never had to do that before. Thanks, gang. Uh, okay, and new features on our website, category5.tv. Uh, check it out. You'll see that uh, that we actually have a donations thermometer. There was some discussion in the chat room during the show last week about uh, a request for a donations thermometer on our website. Uh, that kind of outlines uh, a little bit about what what uh, what we're doing, what we're looking to do um, since we had a power surge. Um, the the kind of the idea and the decision, I guess, or the my thought is that um, we we need to. We need to replace the hardware anyways because it's damaged. So do you know we we can either start here and 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 it would work okay, or we just get what what we need and and go with that. Uh, the, what's amazing is that we found an XW6600. It's a an HP workstation. It has two processors. They're Xeon quad core processors, and so it's a fantastic system. And the company that's going to sell it to us is going to sell it to us for less than what I would pay just for the processors. So that, all that information is right there on the website on the donations thermometer, uh, hard drives for that server, uh, because we have to actually put drives in it for the operating system and the file storage. And then the, uh, the Apex headsets, which require phantom power, by the way. Mm. Cool. Those are also in the mix. And the XLR adapters, which are the, uh, the adapters that allow this thin little cable to plug into our board uh, through an XLR cable. So that's all there. And as well... Uh, I've shown how many uh, or how how the grand total of the donations that have come in so far towards that goal. Uh, those are there on the thermometer, and we're about 44% towards our our uh, ultimate goal. One of the questions that An Andrew Jameson uh, asked me on Twitter uh, this week was, "Well, what happens? You know, here you've got enough money for the server, basically, uh, or almost there, uh, with when you factor in the hard drives and the tax." So are you going to just do that and then worry about the microphones later? And that's exactly what I think we would do is, you know, the, the server or the computer system, the workstation is the most, the highest priority. And then from there, uh, microphones come next and, and things like that. So, um, so I want to be open with you about what it is that we hope to, uh, to do there. It's, it's, a it's a necessary evil kind of thing. And so that's, that's where we're at, 44%. And I appreciate everybody who's pitched in so far. Uh, thank you so very much. Um, so that's new on our website. Uh, get your viewer testimonials in this week. We'd love to hear from you, category5.tv, and uh, we'd love to be able to feature those on the uh, on the show as well. How's your week going? Oh, not too bad so far. Yeah? Yeah. It's starting to speed up a little bit, so that's always good. I think it's like, well, there's, there's a couple factors. I think people are out and about and more active now. All of a sudden, it's such better weather. Mm -hmm. and out of hibernation. Yeah, yeah. exactly. But also... <laughs> Tax checks coming back. People are wanting ah. to spend some money, get their 
I will take your attack checks. She will take your attack checks. I will take checks. them. Take them off your hands. <laughs> but I think that's that's affecting business. It's really it's getting busy, eh? I Which met is good. with somebody else that's looking for a new website today and good. Yeah. Very good. Alright. So, uh, viewer points, uh, this week I didn't get any photos from you, so very sorely disappointed. Uh, I'd love to get your photo uh, to give you 100 viewer points. Hello. Love to give those to you. All, all I need is a picture of you watching your device, uh, watching Category 5 TV on your device. Snap a picture, send it to live at Category5.tv, and uh, let me know your uh, user handle on the website as well, uh, just so there's no confusion in getting those points to you, and that will give you 100 viewer points. If there's anybody new joining us in the chat room, we'd love to hear from you. I'm going to try to keep on top of the chat room, and of course Krista's there as well. Uh, Krista, we figured out last week that if someone says Krista's name, it lights up in red. red. <laughs> so that's cool. If somebody says my name, Robbie F., it comes up uh, in a pop-up kind of notification window. So make sure uh, make sure you, you say our name and get our attention. Cool? Good to see everybody. Watching for anyone who's brand new here uh, would be great to hear from you. Just let us know in the chat room. Just say either Krista or Robbie F. Say hey. Haha. -ha. Do you have any questions <laughs> for me to get the show rocking? And we'll jump right into those if we have some. And if you have some questions for me, here I'm dropping. People are asking about my Dvorak. Where'd my head go? And I'm dropping them all over the place. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later as well. All right. So oh. let's jump in. So first question says, hi, Robbie. If you've got time, I wonder if you could help me out. If not, please don't worry. I understand you're busy. Robbie's never too busy for questions. SBL, Society of Biblical Literature, have kindly put a free version of the Greek New Testament up on their website. Um, they offer an XML version, and I was trying to write an XSL style sheet that will parse through and display the verses. I get stuck with only being able to output the first word of each paragraph. How do I cycle through all books, paragraphs, and words with suffix in XSL so that I can display them like a normal book? I keep mm. getting stuck in XSL when I come up with a repeating node with a, within a repeating node. Many thanks, Peter. Uh, he's he's included. Peter's included the uh, a little sn snapshot of the XML file here, and I'm just pasting it, Peter, into a, a document from your email just so that we don't reveal your email address there by accident. And what I see, the first stuff that I see, so asking about, it, it's coming up when you, when you set it up, it's coming up like word for word for word. It's a little different the way that they've set up this XML file. Maybe this is normal, um, especially for, for scripture and stuff like that. But what's, what's different to me about this is that each word is within this W wrapper. So I'm not sure if that's standard for XSL for the for stylizing it but it's a little different and it might be also because it's Greek I don't know but it, it would appear to me I don't I don't I can't read that at all unfortunately just because of I don't understand Greek but um, but I would expect that to me looks like it's probably one like one word per um, per key so if that's the case what you would actually need to do is it would have to be stylized through um, well, I mean, I, I would personally, I would look at that and I would say, well, let's just parse it, like create a PHP parsing system that would automatically convert that over to a readable format um, or even um, output it to a new file format because that to me seems like a little bit tough to work with if it's if it's creating a new key for every single word. Can you let me know a little bit more about the structure of that file just because I, I'm not understanding it just because of the language uh, barrier that we have between English and, and uh, the Greek. But uh, if you could let me know, um, for example, is the, with this being Greek, I would want to know if this word here in fact comes visually before this word or it, because it's right to left is it backwards as far as that goes as well so that this is actually um, the first word of the sentence for example I'm not I'm not sure because I don't know the language but can you let me know just because if I could instead if I could create a, a quick parser for you on the air and, and show you how to to create a parser to, to convert that to a, a readable format or if you want to send me uh, create create a an English version 
of just exactly the snippet that you've given me there, just so that I can understand what it is that uh, that we need to do. So, sorry I can't be of too much more help there, but I hope that uh, that we'll be able to over the course of maybe next show. If you pop me another email, I'll uh, I'll be happy to take a look for you. All right, so let's head into the next question. It says, hey, Robbie and the team, for all those buddy musicians out there in Category 5 land, check this site out. You create a song by just singing, and if you can't sing, you can even just hum or whistle a tune you may yeah. have in your head, and Unjam will do the rest. And when you're happy then, Unjam will create an MP3 of your creation. I can feel the competition coming on. 100 points for the best viewer song. Cool. I'm just looking at the email there. It's ujam.com, like the yeah. letter U. And then J A M. Cool stuff. The idea behind that, from what I gather, it really reminds me of an app that I've got on the iPod Touch that uh, that my kids just absolutely adore. <laughs> uh, and what's it called here? It's called La Di Da. Now you say that you can't you can't sing at all, right? That's what you I, said <laughs> in your bio. I cannot sing. What's the deal with that? What's the story? Um, I was born without the ability to sing well. Really? Yes. I'm not doing it on air. <laughs> <laughs> with this with this La Da app, it looks just like that, and that's what's up on my screen here. And you see, Krista, when I push this record button, it starts clicking, and I'll hold it up close to my microphone. I don't know. What could we do? We could name a song. What is this? <laughs> what's neat about it? I don't know. Ooh. Right? Okay, that's really lame, but at least we don't have to pay any royalty checks. <laughs> Somebody's going to email me and say, no, no, that was, uh, that that was actually song. copyright. That, I wrote that. Yeah. Okay, so now if I push play, what's neat is that this is now added. It's called unplugged as the style. So if I push play... See, it's added guitar, it's added mm. drums, it's it's put in a crowd cheering in the background. And what's amazing about it is it uses uh, voice recognition technology or, or uh, pitch recognition technology, I should say, to figure out what key you're singing in and what what it is that you're that you're like what chord it should be playing. And then it creates an accompaniment track based on what you've sung. And to top it all off, it has pitch correction technology built in so that it, it will actually fix your pitch if you can't sing <laughs> so it seems like a lot of work it seems like a, a lot for That's a little cool. <laughs> you know for something like uh like an ipod touch which mm -hmm. to me it's it's amazing what technology they can fit in my in my shirt pocket it's amazing so that's all that is that's called la di da l-a-d-i-d-a and uh to, that's probably pretty similar to to what you're talking about with ujam.com, which has some videos on their site outlining. I think this is a little more spectacular in that um, you can actually do some audio editing. There's a little bit of a piano roll feature that will allow you to change the the, the keyboard melody and things like that. But uh, it's neat to see some of that technology coming out. Cool. Give it a look-see. All right. Chat room, I'm looking at you. Nice to see you. Nice to have you here tonight. <laughs> Plain or peanut M&Ms, Gadwill wants to know. Opinions? Peanut. All the way. Really? Yeah, yeah really. I'd, I'd say peanut M&Ms are, are like the, the thing that I never think to buy, but every time I have them, I'm They're like, delicious. those are really good. Why would you just go plain when you can have the best of both worlds together? There you go. Chocolate. And peanuts. Now I have a nephew who's allergic to nuts, though, so I have to be ah. careful with this kind of stuff now. So it's like, what do you what do you do? So we'll just eat them in the backyard. <laughs> D man eight ten got their uh, pogo plug. How are you loving that? Um, love to hear your story. Uh, let me know. I am Boris Karloff. Uh, prefer Smarties. <laughs> We're watching the chat room here. Get in the chat room, Category 5. Change into a, a candy, yeah. candy show. That's fine. We'll talk for, what do we have, 45 minutes. 45 minutes? Yeah, my are cool. Smarties. 
Ah, uh, yes. We do have uh, Hillary who's joining us tonight. She's going to be joining us from the newsroom in uh, just a few minutes. Uh, I'll just let you know uh, what's coming up. As that loads up on my screen here, uh, you may or may not have heard, but Cisco has actually calculated the amount of internet traffic that we should expect to see uh, in 2015, and the numbers are quite staggering, kind of scary when you think about the IPv4 issues and things like that. Uh, they really need to step something up based on those numbers. Also, uh, if you've been holding on to your classic web browser, uh, Google is once again putting down their foot, the almighty Google foot, and uh, they are going to be canceling support for Internet Explorer 7. Safari 3 and Firefox 3.5. ASUS is giving Linux a, uh, a warm welcome back as they are launching a new product line of uh, EPCs and they are going to come pre-installed with Ubuntu. But uh, Hillary's actually got some interesting news about uh, that deal that they've, uh, that they've made with, uh, with ASUS. Uh, and that's coming up in about 15 minutes. Also, uh, you, you remember last week that uh, we mentioned that Steve Jobs was going to be uh, doing a presentation about iOS 5 uh, this week. He was there yesterday uh, at their, uh, their, their big event uh, for the, all the big announcements with the i devices and i software. Um, and he did reveal a lot about uh, iOS 5, including uh, a bunch of new features. Uh, Hillary's going to be telling you about that. Uh, so all the fanboys and girls are going to be very pleased. Yay! And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Your apple is almost out of the shot tonight. I is like it? That. Oh, yeah. I can fix that. I'm sorry, guys. There you go. That wasn't exactly what I was, what no, I was I saying. I can't read my yeah. screen, but that's fine. <laughs> World IPv6 Day is tomorrow, and uh, that could mean disaster, but uh, it's going to be even less of a disaster than if they don't do it. So stick around. Hillary's got all the, uh, the information for you coming up in the newsroom, and that's coming in uh, just about 13 minutes from now. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and it's nice to have you here. Chat room, do you have any questions for us? This is kind of our open forum time that we can uh, take some questions from the chat room. Love to, uh, to get your questions here. Chat room is a busy spot. We're watching for your questions here. Just pointing out, yep. DOS Bomber lives next to a Hershey chocolate factory. DOS Bomber. Can we make a Category 5 field trip? Maybe like DOS Bomber needs uh, our mailing address. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. No questions, it looks like, in the chat room. So we, uh, we can get... Uh, right into our feature if there aren't going to be any questions tonight. We do want to, uh, we want to give you the chance to, uh, to get your questions in. Last chance, last chance to get your questions in here on the show. <laughs> okay, we've got uh, MMD Murphy who has Ubuntu with Unity. It's a dual display and can move the mouse to the second display but can't drag items to it. Is that second display, is it virtualized or is it just Linux? Have you got like VirtualBox running like a Windows machine on that second display or is it... Uh, and what are the items that you're trying to drag? Are these... like are you trying to just simply move a window onto the next screen? Or are you... Uh, what is it... Uh, my first guess Okay, it's just Linux. So my first guess then, MMD Murphy, would be that uh, you haven't set that up with twin view mode, uh, that you are actually running two separate X sessions. Are you using ATI or are you using uh, NVIDIA chipset cards? And I'm hoping you'll say NVIDIA because if you do, that's what I'm running and I can show you. What happens is um, if you have a separate X session set up versus um, twin view, Oh, good. NVIDIA. Uh, then a, a separate X session means that each of, each monitor is interpreted as if it's its own Linux installation. You're doing two different things between the two X sessions. So what's different, if you go into Applications, ex, uh, no, pardon me, System, Administration, NVIDIA X Server Settings, if you go in there, and we're going to go into X server display configuration and configure. And you'll see here you've got disabled requires X restart, separate X screen, 
or twin view. I only have one monitor here, so of course that's all you're going to see. However, what I, I have the sinking suspicion that you have separate X screen is what you've got checked off. What you instead want to do is twin view, which is going to, in fact, uh, work as though uh, more like what you would expect from a dual monitor system. You can drag things from one monitor to the next. Being that you're on the NVIDIA platform, if that's your problem, you're going to see both monitors here, and you're going to be able to drag one monitor to the left and one monitor to the right to actually position those monitors the way that, uh, that they should be positioned, like the way that they're positioned physically. MMD Murphy, are you on that computer, and do you have access to see if that's, uh, if that's true of your scenario? NVIDIA says that the driver is active but not running or something like that. Oh, that could be uh, that could be a bit of an issue too. Make sure that you've got the uh, the proprietary driver running. System administration hardware drivers. It's just taking a second to come up, but it is coming. Searching for available drivers. Another uh, quick note while we're waiting for that to load there, MMD Murphy, is that. It, it, once you've got this thing set up properly, what you need to do uh, when you when you've set it up in NVIDIA settings, okay? So you've gone through this whole process of getting it working, and you're happy with it. Okay, there's my hardware drivers. But once you've got this all set up and it's and you're happy with it, close it because it's gonna it's applied to your current system, okay? But then hit Alt F2, and here's what you want to do: GK sudo so that you're a super user NVIDIA dash settings. The reason you want to do that is now it's going to run NVIDIA settings as the super user. So now you've got the ability to save those settings so next time you reboot okay so you've got you bring it back up it's still gonna look exactly the same but now this option down here is gonna work save to X configuration file and when you click on that save to X configuration file it's gonna just follow the prompts hit OK and, and ignore whatever else and that's going to actually save that uh, so that when you reboot the computer, it's going to be uh, back to the way that you set it up. All right. Um, so looking at my proprietary drivers, this is uh, part of Ubuntu. Proprietary drivers are being used on my system because I've activated it. You need to highlight. Uh, usually I just highlight the recommended one. Sometimes you, you may want to select a certain one if it works better on, in your scenario. For me, I've highlighted the version current, which is a meta package for whatever is the current version. It'll automatically update. Um, and once you've highlighted it, you'll see that there's an activate button down at the bottom. You want to click that. It, what that's going to do is it's going to download the drivers from the internet, from NVIDIA. It's going to install them on your Ubuntu system and make it go. So hopefully those are some good starting points for you, MMD Murphy, and uh, let me know. Let us know how it goes. Cool. Codars here is asking which is uh, which you think is the best way to understand a new web coding language. Well, how do you mean the best way to understand it? A lot of times it's um, it, it's like learning anything. It's it, you just kind of have to study it and figure out what things do by trial and error. Sometimes you need to break things and figure it out. Techniques. Hmm. It's it's hard to say Codars 360 just based on on that because like for me when I'm learning something like if I wanted to learn PHP from scratch and and this actually happened to me because I used to be an HTML developer and then I needed PHP I needed to be able to do server side stuff I needed to be able to create more than HTML could provide I needed to be able to, I was working on a photo gallery for my band at the time which ironically I think that original gallery is still is still online <laughs> at soulcleansed.com so this is the old website that I created way back then so one of my first kind of dynamic websites uh, which doesn't conform to anything these days but there was a photo gallery feature and I'm not sure if that's still there but I'll click on it that's that's back when I had hair eh <laughs> you know I had hair back then? Is that a hat or is that all the that hair is, you have? <laughs> that's just my <laughs> awesome hair. <laughs> I did have a hat, as a matter of fact. It's really thick it, and luxurious. It doesn't look like it's coming out, but in this in this particular instance, I did need 
Yeah, it looks like the photos are, are gone, unfortunately. But I needed to learn how to do more than just HTML, so I, I wanted to create a nice photo gallery, so that's what I did. And that led to learning how to work with arrays, learning how to work with um, the dynamicness of PHP. So uh, just, uh, I would say, find a project that you're passionate about, something that you, that you enjoy, so get an idea. For me, it was the photo gallery. It was wanting to have a thumbnail that when you clicked on it, it blows up into a full-size picture, and then it creates a back button, and it takes you back to the thumbnail gallery. So if it's something like that, and then try to create it. Use arrays. Use, um, you know, that's a good starting point. Uh, use for each loops. Get familiar with what that means. And those are very, very basic things that are going to help you to uh, be able to do some, uh, some PHP. So, and that's that's looking at PHP alone. So, cool. Uh, we've got time for probably one quick question in the chat room before we switch over to the newsroom. If uh, anyone has another uh, another question for me, here's one here from Final Blogger. All right. And he says he's tried PHP. It's not that difficult, but he would like to know which editor he should use. What platform are you on? Are you on Windows, Linux? Uh, Mac. Just watching for a reply here in the chat room. Our chat room is found uh, on our website, category5.tv. We have an embedded uh, chat room that you can bring up, or uh, of course you can uh, you can also connect to Freenode. I connect through uh, through Pigeon. You connect to the Freenode IRC network and just go into the category5 chat room. Final Blogger is using Ubuntu, so they want to be able to edit PHP files within Ubuntu and I would encourage you final blogger to uh, to study through our web development series that we we've done recently it's a 12 part course uh, that really uh, helps you to understand uh, some of the ideas and concepts behind web development um, Agamotto is suggesting Emacs which is going to be terminal based my preference is use, still sticking with the GUI and going with just simply a uh, simply gedit and you'll see in one of the early episodes of the uh, web development series, which is available at cat5.tv slash webdev, if you, uh, if you bring that up, one of the early episodes actually goes through how to configure your um, gedit for basically for PHP editing. So you'd, uh, you'd want to check that out, cat5.tv slash webdev. And uh, we're going to head over to the newsroom in just a moment, so I'll let the, the ladies do the old switcheroo. Any other comments about that in the uh, chat room? I use gedit and I use it professionally uh, for uh, working with PHP uh, as well as CSS and uh, everything else that I do, JavaScript and all that stuff. Um, gedit does the colorizations which I love. It does automatic uh, bracket matching so if you open a bracket you can see where the bracket ends. If you open a loop you can see where the loop ends um, so it's, uh, it really works quite well for that. Greg in Texas reiterating, gedit is perfect. It really is. I've tried other stuff. I tried Bluefish, and I tried uh, some of the other editors. And honestly, nothing compares to gedit. It's just fantastic. So, Hillary's joining us uh, in the, the newsroom tonight. Nice to have you here. Thank you. Hello. Are you ready? Hey. I'm ready. But first. What's up? I have a public service announcement. Actually, no, I was surprised. For Robbie. This bad boy oh. that I found in a local dollar store. Now I got a dollar store because I was like, Star Trek, awesome! Star Trek, awesome! So who is this character? Is it James T. Kirk? Is it is it Spock? No, it's Sulu. Warp Clutch and Sulu. Well, that's cool. Featuring utility belt phaser and communicator. Does the actor who plays Sulu feel like a little upset that his doll is now found in the dollar store? I don't look and see if I can find other ones at other dollar That's fantastic. Stores. So I'm going to be on the, the hunt, so this is for Robbie. Thank you. It comes with a little itty bitty tricorder. I'm turned on now. I'm turned oh, on. I hope. Did you guys hear that? <laughs> she presented me with a, a Sulu doll that she found at the yes. dollar store. Sorry, mm -hmm. world. My mic was not on. We're going to get this whole mic thing sorted, aren't we? It's my We're going to have three microphones, and we're going to have the phantom power on at all times. <laughs> That's so cool. There you go. But uh, but no Captain Kirk. No. No, no Spock. No Spock. 
Just this guy. I'm not that he's not important. However, I was just like, oh yeah, I'll get like spa. Well, you know what they do is they overprint. Yeah, okay, so on the back it shows you, you've got, they've got the original Spock, they've got Spock, mm-hmm. Cadet McCoy, and then it goes down the list, and Sulu's halfway down the list. I think what happens, though, is that they print so many, like Captain Kirk, Captain Kirk, <laughs> you know, they only print so many of him so that he becomes a collector's item, yes, that would be the hope, true. right? So, something like this, I don't know if it, it would become a collector's item, but it will definitely grace the, uh, the Category well, 5 studio. Well, now I'm going to be on the hunt, I'm going to see who else I can find. At other dollar stores. That's a stores. cool idea. <laughs> what else fell off the I can't believe you got that truck. at a dollar store. I've seen these in, in the toy shop for like 17 bucks, and I'm like, oh, I want it. And and I didn't get it because dollar it was 17 store. bucks. Dollar store. Hello. You just have to wait like for a couple of years <laughs> after the movie comes exactly. out. Exactly. Um, so chat room, should I open that or do I like let that sit in the box? I, I'm not, I, I, when I bought, I used to have the TNG Ooh, figurines okay. and stuff. I was a kid. I was I was a geek <laughs> of a kid, but I took them all out of the box. There was nothing, it was, and I and I s- set them up and stuff. And played so, with them, so yeah, what yeah. I, yeah, and well, played with them. Well, you know them. what? If you want to play with one and keep one, I'm sure I could go back to the dollar store and get a <laughs> they double. Have, they have an Do entire you know row so in the dollar store it's doable. of Sulu. <laughs> this is the Sulu <laughs> aisle. <laughs> uh, so do I open that or do I leave it? You let me know in the chat room. I'll come back to you just after the news. Hillary, I'll let you take it away. Thank you for being here. Certainly. Certainly. So, from the Category 5.TV newsroom, here are some incredible predictions from technology giant Cisco. With the proliferation of tablets, mobile phones, connected appliances, and other smart machines, Cisco has calculated that the number of internet-connected devices will exceed 15 billion by the year 2015, twice the world's population. The company said consumer video will continue to dominate internet traffic, and it predicts that by 2015, 1 million minutes of video will be watched online every second. Cisco's visual networking index estimated at the same time more than 40% of the world's projected population will be online, a total of nearly 3 billion people. So how much data do you figure that really is? Well, an exabyte is equal to 1 quintillion bytes, and in 2004, global monthly internet traffic exceeded 1 exabyte for the very first time. Cisco forecasts that by 2015, internet traffic will reach 966 exabytes per year. Whoa. As Robbie mentioned earlier, Google is officially phasing out support for older browsers starting August 1st. Those using IE7, Safari 3, Firefox 3.5, and their predecessors to view Gmail, Google Calendar, Uh, Talk, Docs, and Sites will begin having some real trouble unless they upgrade to a modern browser. Google warns that these web services will stop working altogether for those sticking with the older browsers sometime in the not-so-distant future. The move is part of a trend to stop the use of aging browsers, which can be insecure and not really sophisticated enough to handle the latest web technologies. It is important for users to upgrade their browsers to the latest versions because as technology changes on the web, some content will simply not work in the older browsers. If you're using an old browser, make sure you upgrade now. To get the latest version of Firefox, which works on Windows, Macs, Linux, and Linux, um, hop over to the website getfirefox.com. Asus Tech has announced that it will ship three models of its EEE PC with Ubuntu 10.10 pre-installed. Canonical announced Asus' decision to load the EEE PC um, 1001PXD, 1011PX, and the 1015PX with Ubuntu 10.10 from June 1st um, as one that will make it one of the most user-friendly PCs on the market. It's user-friendly, although not reader-friendly. Clearly, I can't <laughs> read. Previously, the majority of ASUS EEE PC netbooks came preloaded with Microsoft's Windows operating system, although it wasn't always that way. When ASUS introduced the EEE PC... <laughs> I'm killing you here. The EEE We call PC. it the EPC, yeah. Well, um, I know. I kind of flows. It's just funny. Yeah. Anyways, when they introduced the EEE PC back in 2007, <laughs> it shipped with the 
Xandros Linux distribution. Yeah, I remember that. However, once Microsoft realized that next books were becoming a big seller, it came out with a cut-down version of its Windows operating system. Innovation, see? Ooh, clever. <laughs> Since then, the majority of netbooks that have been sold have been preloaded with Microsoft's operating system. However, it seems that Linux on netbooks is having something of a renaissance. Chris Kenyon, VP of OEM services at Canonical said, the deal with Asus, Asus is an important one for Canonical which will put Ubuntu in the hands of a larger audience. People who would not necessarily download Ubuntu, but would be happy to buy a computer knowing that it will work perfectly on that hardware. He did not reveal why Asus went with October's 10.10 .10 release, rather than the more recent Ubuntu 11.04, which was released just in April. Could it be due to Unity? Hmm, I don't know. Either way, this is a push for Linux, and a chance for non-savvy users to experience the ease of use of the Linux operating system. They'll just be freaked out if they accidentally upgrade to 11.04 and are greeted with Unity, just like the rest of us. And the wraps were taken off the next iOS update yesterday as Apple unveiled iOS 5, packed with 200 features, an all new notification center, the new iMessage application, and a PC free design that finally cuts the iCable. With the new PC free feature, iOS 5 users can activate and set up their iOS device right out of the box and get software updates over the air with no computer required. Steve Jobs, Apple CEO, said yesterday, perhaps iOS 5's paramount feature is that it's built to seamlessly work with iCloud in the post PC revolution that Apple is leading. Also being added to iOS 5 is the system-wide Twitter integration. Users will be able to quickly post to the social networking site with ease, as accounts will be integrated in applications like camera and photos. iOS 5 is available now for developers and will be available to users as a free software update for the iPhone 4 and 3GS, both iPad models and both third and fourth generation iPod touches, to, uh, to, uh, iPod touches this fall. Cool, very, very cool. And tomorrow, technologists and network operators around the world will be watching internet traffic especially closely on what is being called the worldwide IPv6 day. For a 24 hour period on Wednesday, several large companies, including Google, Facebook, and Yahoo, will enable support for IPv6, the internet's next generation addressing scheme. Ooh. It's the first large-scale test flight of the new system, and another step in the Internet's slow transition away from the decades-old IPv4 standard, which is expected to all but crash sometime this August. In February, the Internet Assigned Numbers Authority handed out two of the very last IP address blocks, and with the continuing growth of the Internet and increase in Internet-connected devices, this is a really big problem. World IPv6 Day is an attempt to promote awareness of IPv6, but also to iron out some of the potential bugs. On Wednesday, the network operators and content providers like Google and Facebook will have a chance to measure the real-world impact of this transition. Let's hope, keep your fingers crossed, beyond hope, that this impact does not lack um, of access to the key websites out there. Yeah, keep your fingers crossed. Woo! You can get these full, awesome, wonderful stories online at category5.tv slash newsroom. The category5.tv newsroom is researched by Roy W. Nash with contributions from our fabulous community of viewers. If you have a news story you think is worthy of honor or mention, send us an email. Do it. Do it right now at newsroom at category5.tv. From the category5.tv newsroom, I'm Hillary. Thanks, Phil. <laughs> You're welcome. You know, we're not sponsored by Star Trek, but I don't mind endorsing them. <laughs> <laughs> I wore this shirt for you today. Oh, yeah. I did notice that when I came in, actually. I yeah. like it. Very good. Because Robbie, good. for those who may recall last year, was a judge at a Battle of the Bands Battle event, the Bands. and I attended, and I five was there as standing, well. Five I think, or something like yeah, that. Yeah, well, it's number six this year, yeah. Yep, so it was five so, years that I did it, and yeah. this year I have to miss because my daughter's birthday, birthday party, is happening on and Friday. that is totally understandable. That's the, there are very few things that would make me miss <laughs> Battle of the Bands. 
but I'm there in, in my heart. And I appreciate the support. Cheers. So it's good. I hope that it's a fantastic event. Thanks for being Gonna here rock. with us tonight. And no problem. And we'll, uh, we'll see you next week. Sounds good. Thanks, Hillary. Bye, world. This is Category 5 Technology TV, and uh, we are brought to you tonight by Pogo Plug. You can get them, uh, find out more about the device and the software at cat5.tv slash pogoplug, as well uh, Planet Calypso. It's a free, massive multiplayer online game, and you can download the free game uh, from cat5.tv slash calypso and join the Category 5 Viewers Society. And we'll be able to meet up right there in the chat room and hang out... Uh, or uh, hang out in the game, pardon me, not the chat room. I brought up the chat room and it distracted me. <laughs> we'll meet in uh, Planet Calypso. That'd be fun. I uh, have been working on my ergonomics. A little report for you. Now, this is the keyboard that I had purchased. That is, like, massive, the, the box, as far as that goes. It feels overpackaged, but it actually <laughs> is so curved that they really need a big box like that. Um, it, it, I, what I bought is the natural ergonomic keyboard 4000 from Microsoft. I know it's got the Microsoft name, but it's a really good keyboard. But one of the other yeah. things that I wanted to do, and, and I'll tell you what I did there. I didn't order it online. I think a keyboard is one of those things that you really got to go in. You got to feel, you got to you got to understand, you know, okay, this is the keyboard for me because it really makes a difference based on your posture, based on your uh, your build. It, it, it matters which keyboard you choose. So what looks like a good keyboard may not be the keyboard for you. So I wanted to try Dvorak, and I got these stickers, which I can't possibly show you at home, but Krista can probably oh. <laughs> see this. That they're actually they're translucent stickers that I'm going to be able to stick on the keys mm -hmm. of my new keyboard because it, it was only available in QWERTY, uh, which is the the standard keyboard layout for computers. I want to switch it to Dvorak, so I got these stickers. It was like three bucks on eBay, so. Fantastic. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a blog entry. Uh, I'll be working on that, and I will post links where you can buy those stickers, uh, things like that. Everything will be included in that blog entry, including videos of the experience itself of me learning to type Dvorak, which I'm very frightened about. It's like learning a whole new language and, and like immersing yourself in it. So That'll be interesting. It's going to be scary. It's going to be really scary. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at Open Shot. This is a, uh, now we've been watching for a Linux application that we can use to edit our videos mm -hmm. for the longest time. And, and one of the things that's really, I think, held back, I guess, a little bit Linux from some desktops is the lack of good video editing software. I mean, people will say, I need to be able to edit videos, so I can't switch to Linux because there's just nothing there that we can use. And I've been in that same boat. I've had to, uh, you know, we run uh, uh, CyberLink PowerDirector uh, for most of our video editing, and it's done very, very well for us, but it's a commercial tool, and here's the kicker, it requires Windows. So uh, Jonathan Thomas has said, you know what, he was programming on Windows, and he said, I want to step in. This is somebody who has done what, what a lot of us should do, which is to say, Rather than standing in the forums and saying, oh, would somebody please do this? Would somebody please do this? John, uh, Jonathan Thomas has said, okay, I'll do it. There's a, there's a need there, so it doesn't pay well, and it's a lot of work, but I'm going to step in and I'm going to do this. And I think that's a, a great mindset to have. And uh, if you go over to openshotvideo.com, you'll see that uh, you've got access to this fantastic tool. Don't install it through your Ubuntu repositories. You'll notice that I'm using Ubuntu Linux right now. What I want you to do instead, openshotvideo.com, I'm going to bring it up. What I want you to do instead is use their uh, PPA, which is a personal package archive or some crazy thing like that. The way to get this is to click on download. Check out his blog as well while you're at it. He tells a lot about, uh, about what he's doing. And So what I've done is I've clicked on download. Scroll down a little ways and you see PPA instructions. Click it. It says Ubuntu 9.10 Karmic and above. Cool. Copy all three lines to your clipboard. Okay. Go into your terminal and go edit, paste. It'll probably ask you for your password. Go through that. Chris Reich is saying, why not get the software from the repositories? Normally, we'd say get it from the repositories because it's great. It's going to get the updates, and it's going to be uh, backed by canonical and this and that. 
The PPA is backed by the developer himself. But here's the kicker. Canonical's repositories are version 1.1.3. Current version is version 1.3.1. You'd think they just reversed the numbers. But in fact, with the PPA version, you get 3D titling. You get uh, a whole slew of new effects and features and uh, improved interface, improved uh, reliability of the interface. Um, so you definitely want to stick with the, uh, with the version that's provided through the PPA by the author of the software, as opposed to what's available in the Ubuntu repository, which is so obsolete that uh, it's not worth getting. And because it's a PPA, it's a personal package archive. We should understand that through a PPA, you're still going to get the updates when your app goes through its regular updates and you get your system updates. They're going to just come from a different source. They're not going to be coming from Canonical. Okay, so I've, I've done that. I'm ready to go. And now, now that that's in, well, first things first, I'm going to go sudo apt-get update. That's something that we type in our terminal every time we add something new to our repository uh, list so that we get the new package lists. Doesn't take long. It's going through that step right now. There, it's done. So now I can bring up Synaptic Package Manager. So we're stepping away from, and you can use you can use apt if you want. You can use apt-get. Uh, you can use the terminal, but uh, we'll we'll go we'll jump back to the GUI because there's no problem with that. Just type in open shot, and you'll see just for the sake of timing on the uh, on the show, I've already installed that. But you want to click it for installation, and you'll see that now it's version 1.3.1. If you didn't add the PPA, it's going to be the wrong version. It's going to be version 1.1.3, which again does not have any of the 3D features. So stay away from that. Okay, as we're getting this set up anyways, one of the other things we need to do is we need to install Inkscape, which you're going to love because it's vector graphics. For free! <laughs> oh, baby! <laughs> Alright, so, Inkscape. Do it while you're here. All right, the one that's in the repository is indeed fine, so let's install that, okay? Regular steps apply. Once that's done, next step, we want to, now what uh, I should explain, what Inkscape now gives us is the ability to edit our SVG titles. Because OpenShot uses, it's, it's what's so neat about open source and the way that things work with, with dependencies and the way things work on Linux is he doesn't have to reinvent the wheel. There's already a vector graphic editor, so tap into it. So install Inkscape, and that gives you vector graphic abilities with an open shot. Install Blender, and all of a sudden you've got the ability to create 3D effects using OpenShot's interface. So we're going to head over to blender.org. This, again, we're not going to get from the repositories because it's so obsolete in the repositories that it's not compatible. I believe OpenShot requires version uh, 2.5.6. If you click on download, you'll see Blender current version is 2.5.7b, which the b don't get phased that you think that that's beta. It is indeed stable. Okay, scroll down, and there are two versions for Linux. There is the x86-32, that's for your 32-bit Linux installation, and there's the x86-64, that's if you're running a 64-bit platform. I'm using 32, so I'm going to download that file. It's 30 megs. I've already downloaded it just for the sake of the demonstration. And then, here's what's neat. You don't have to compile that. You don't have to do anything beyond extracting it from the zip file. So I've created a folder in my home folder called Programs, and I've extracted it there. So now Blender, in its entirety, is right here. I don't need to compile it. I don't need to do anything else. All I need to do is right-click on Blender. That's the executable, Blender. Right-click on it. Whoop. and go copy, okay? Now, we've got OpenShot installed from our PPA. Let's go sound and video, and you'll see OpenShot is now on your menu. That's going to bring that up. So now we go File, first thing we do, pardon me, Edit Preferences, not File, Edit, and down at the bottom you'll see Blender Executable. Remember, we just copied the Blender Executable. We're going to paste it there, and that is actually pasting a link to the file itself. Okay, So now we close that, and now we've got the capability to create those 3D title uh, sequences. Okay, So that's one that I just created. For, just to save rendering time, I already created it. And what we're going to do tonight 
within this extremely fast-paced and, and exciting tutorial about how to use OpenShot, we're just going to take last week's news feature with Hillary, and we're just going to cut it down, and we're going to turn this into its own little feature using this free open source software uh, from OpenShotVideo.com. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to add my media, which I've placed on my desktop. I've already organized it in a folder called Project Files. And remember, most digital or most video cameras these days are digital. Mm -hmm. So when I take video with my video camera, they're stored in, in the hard drive of the video camera. When I copy them over, it's not like copying from tape used to be. It's not a dub. You're not having to create dubs of the videos. It's actually the video file is from your camera. That's quite often what you get. Um, so in our case, we're just using clips from the show, so that's fine. I've got two files. I've got the one file is the entire episode, and it's HD quality. And I've got another one is the file from Bla Backstage Pass. You'll notice they're both very different formats. One is a WMV, one is an FLV. And I'm going to add those. And now I'm also going to add the images that we use for the the news. So you'll see that these are you know the files that we use when we actually do the news broadcast. These are the ones that we had there last week. So what I want to do, I've got that video sequence that I created, the news. The way that we do that now that we've got Blender set up is we go. Check this out, it's so simple. Title, new animated title. Okay. If you don't have the correct version of Blender installed, it'll warn you, don't worry. And that's what I clicked on. I clicked on Glare because it looked fancy. You enter. <laughs> Are you laughing at me? <laughs> and you enter in. You just fill in the blanks. My show title. Okay, this is the file name. And now we'll say, ooh, my show. And that's the text that's actually going to, um, to show up. Note to Jonathan, typo. The titra. Is that a word? The titra? It's all good. It's all good. So when you click render, that's actually going to tap into the power of Blender, which we set up in our edit preferences, and it's going to create this wonderful sequence. And there's so many to choose from. Feel free to click around. Okay, so now I'm going to grab the episode 193 and just drop it. And look at how smooth this is. Look at how I can just drag it around, and there's no, there's no lag. There's no waiting for it. It's there. It's good to go, and I can scroll around, right? Beautiful. They've really, I mean, Jonathan has done a fantastic job. Uh, I don't know who else he works with, but it's just been fantastic. Uh, and it's come along so much over the past little while since, it, since its uh, inception. One of the th first things I want to do is I want to save this project. I don't need to title it, but you can um, set it to the profile style. I've set mine to DV uh, NTSC widescreen because I'm working with widescreen videos. And that is just because, what if, I mean, the program could crash. What if the power goes out and you lose your, your work? Eh, you just keep it saved. I always save, save, save every time I do something substantial. A couple of, uh, quick rundown of the tools that are available in OpenShot. Uh, there are, okay, add, add a track. We're going to come back to that. Arrow tool is the tool that you use in order to move things around on the tracks, okay? This one here, scissors, is uh, the ra it's actually called the razor tool. They've changed the icon in this version. So uh, what this is fantastic and it's so quick. This razor tool, say I'm here, okay, and I want to cut the video right there. So I click there and it instantly creates a second clip. There's no waiting. Now I can right click on the first clip and go remove and it's gone. Click on my arrow, uh, uh, my little icon tool there, the arrow tool, uh, and move that in. So now the video starts where I cut it. All right, next tool is the resize tool. If I click on that, now I can grab the edge of any item and resize it. I can grab that. I could take my images. Here's a cool thing if you want to make image slideshows. And I can resize, which is basically changing the length, the duration of that image. See how it's you know, 10 seconds, 11 seconds, 12 seconds, okay? So I'm actually moving that with that tool. And I, I recognize that uh, the tools are not quite visible when, I, when I'm uh, broadcasting here, but uh, you can get the gist of that on your own system. 
cool stuff. So I'm going to remove that clip. I'm going to move this over. And let's just use this tool over here to zoom out a bit. I'm going to go like that. And that's zooming out of my video because it is a one hour video. Okay. And now let's click around. There we are. There's Hillary. So we know that the news starts about there. And see what I'm doing is I'm just dragging the slider on the top little ruler area up here. And I'm just bringing it, just nudging it in there to where she starts. Now I'm going to grab that razor tool. I'm going to get right in there. And I'm going to cut it right on the line. There we go. The zoom feature that I'm using is a part of Ubuntu Linux. That's holding your window key or your super key and using the scroll wheel on your mouse. And now I'm going to zoom back in on the video using OpenShot. And now I can align these videos. Now watch this. Okay, so I'm going to overlap that. What happens here, track one is under track two. So track two is going to overwrite what's on the screen. So if I move my cursor here, there's the news. And then as soon as track two starts, boom, it's over to Hillary. So what we want to do is we want to have a transition there. So I'm going to go up here, click on transitions, and scroll through and play around. There are a ton to choose from. Remember, this is free. I'm going to drag that, and I'm going to drop it right in the middle so that that video is going to transition into that video. I can resize the transition itself. Okay, so it's going to be a nice seamless wipe. And if the arrow is pointing the other way, it means we're going the wrong way, in which case you right click and you go switch direction. It's as easy as that. And see the arrow is now pointing the other way. In our case, we want to fade from this into this, from track, pardon me, track one into track two. So now if I let it play, nice beautiful fade. There it is. Okay? So you see, and I can just I can go back, see how it fades right into that clip using the nice wipe that we chose. So then when we're done, let's just pretend that we are finished editing our video, and that's as simple as it is. Okay, so we've edited it down. You can have multiple clips, as many clips as you want, of course. And remember that uh, the the layers that are on top are the ones that are going to be displayed above the other layers. So we can now create another layer if you need to, or another track, pardon me, tracks. This is a multi-track editor, so you can add as many tracks as you want, limited only by your computer's hardware. And now we can add like a picture to go along with what Hillary is saying, for example. Now I'm not actually editing a video here, I'm just showing you the ideas and the concepts behind how we're going to use this software. So there's a picture of Linus, and I've pasted it on top of that, so now if we go back here you'll see it fades from that into there's Hillary and then all of a sudden here comes a picture of Linus because let's pretend that that's who she's talking about at that time and then it goes back to her because that layer with 3.jpg is above the one with 193.wmb now let's add credits to our video because that's what we're gonna end our show with we're gonna go into title new title and we're not gonna use the 3d ones this time instead we're gonna create one we're gonna use Inkscape I'm going to scroll down this list, play around with these. These are just different ones that you can choose from. You can click on one and then use your arrow key, down key, to move through the, uh, the list. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just choose standard one or whatever. It can be, it can be that. Create new title. Uh, this is my credits. And I'm just going to go blah, blah, apply. And then we're going to go use advanced editor because we've installed the advanced editor, which is Inkscape. And when we've got that in, here we go. Double click, triple click, and go, my show brought to you by Robbie Ferguson, Krista Wells, Hillary Rumble. Now notice my text is now outside of the frame of that, so I'm going to go File document properties and down here I'm gonna go fit page to selection done so now my document 
is outside of the word Hillary Rumble. I'm going to hit save, close that, and now that is what my end captions look like. So that's actually created an SVG file here in my media manager, which I'm now going to drag into my timeline right over top of that. And now I'm going to right click on that because right now it just kind of pops in there. Watch what happens after Linus. Boom. There's the credits over top, right? So instead, I'm going to start it right after Hillary, and I'm going to go right click, animate, bottom to top, and now there's my end credits for my movie. Final step, because we're out of time, but this is uh, what we need to do. Hit the big record button up at the top. Go to profile. There are some preset profiles. I'm going to go all formats instead. I'm going to choose MP4, H.264, DV, uh, NTSC widescreen. Choose your quality. We're usually going to go with high quality. And export video. Give it a name. Okay. And there it goes. It's going to create that video right on your hard drive wherever you told it to save. And then you're going to be able to upload that to YouTube, burn it to DVDs, whatever you want to do. You've just created a video with OpenShot Video, uh, video Editor, which is available from OpenShotVideo.com. Pop us an email live at Category5.tv. We'd love to hear from you this week. And if you have any questions about OpenShot, I would be happy to answer those on next week's show. That's 195. And, of course, uh, we'll also relay your questions over to Jonathan, and uh, he'll be able to answer those for you. Uh, in the meantime, have a fantastic week. Sorry to kind of take over there for his like, go, go, go. we got 15 minutes. And there we go. That video is already rendered and it's uh, it's on my desktop. So let's let's just let's do it. Let's take a look. Default project. I'm gonna play it. Here we go. There it is. All done right here live. You two can do that on Linux. Big news for OpenShot fans. Oh, as I break it's my iPod uh, holder there. Uh, big news for OpenShot fans, and of course, if you give it a try, you are going to become a fan, I guarantee you. Uh, Jonathan popped me an email uh, this afternoon, and he said, Hey, by the way, uh, excited to be on the show tonight. Uh, some fun facts for you before the broadcast. Uh, the OpenShot team is secretly working on a new C++ version, uh, which is going to be cross-platform. So that means it uh, might show up on some other uh, devices, such oh as goodness. maybe your Mac or maybe uh, something else. Uh, also, a new animation framework, and it's going to power the future version of OpenShot. So these are uh, other items that are going to be uh, uh, available uh, through them. So uh, they're just about to announce it. I think I just did. <laughs> you just ruined it. Sorry Act surprised. <laughs> Ooh. So when they send out the press release, say, wow, I heard about it first on Cat5 TV. Get me in trouble. <laughs> have a fantastic week. You have a great week. No, you too. We'll Thanks. see you guys. Hillary, great to see you. <laughs> Thanks for being here. And uh, you take care. And we'll talk to you uh, next Tuesday night, same time, 7 o'clock Eastern. Now go watch The Voice. See ya. See ya.